I mean, the ink wasn't even dry on Brian Reynolds' contract. And he goes out and homers, has another hit, couple of walks, and all the ball club does as a collective is win 9-4 to four over the Nationals, who had just won a series from the Dodgers. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. Yes, Pirates and Positivity happening in the same episode. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer up daily shots of Steelers and Penguins that I hope you'll check out. I'm barely scratching the surface on everything that went right in this one. Daniel Vogelback, four hits, including a leadoff home run, and I mean leading off the game. Cole Tucker, who was all but DFA'd, a day earlier, had three hits. And then there's Rowanzi Contreras coming in and putting up three zeros with five Ks, including a strikeout for the ages of, of all people. Juan Soto had to be seen to be believed. He's firing nothing but gas to the guys in front of Soto, 98-99, 98-99, downstairs, upstairs, inside, outside. Soto comes up, and he just gets nothing but these curves, these big, swooping, way-too-fast curves. He had no chance at these pitches. People in my business and myself included, will be guilty of overusing superlatives and say things like, it was brilliant, it was electrifying, it was mesmerizing. He is that. This kid is that on the mound. It doesn't mean he's flawless. It doesn't mean he's, you know, never going to give up a run or something ridiculous like that. But that stuff is out of this world. And when you combine everything that I just laid out for you with all that defense that we saw the day before with a couple of clutch hits, a terrific relief outing by Will Crow, who's looking like another breakout candidate, and then you bundle all that together with the Kibrian Hayes extension that'll keep him in Pittsburgh essentially for life, and then the team finally figuring things out at least as a a ramp up or a launching pad toward an extension like that for Reynolds, you know, I'm just going to ask you again the same question that was posed in yesterday's episode, and that is, is it okay to feel good about the franchise? This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. I know this much about feeling good about the franchise. The people inside that clubhouse, the general mood, the the on-the-record, the off-the-record, whatever it is, they're there. They're there already, and they're feeling it seemingly a little bit more each day. Listen to Reynolds after this game. Uh, what do you want to say about the homer? Executed the right pitch, seeing the right thing, good swing. The homer? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he just gave me a fastball right in the middle. And you can't do that. And I, and I got the barrel to it. 
nothing crazy there, nothing special. Uh, real reason why this is Dan's idea here. You, you guys got paid. You and Key got paid. You know, a couple guys got first wins. Dio got the first hit. Safe to call this a really, really good week for, for the ball club. Yeah, I definitely called a great week. Um, yeah, things were definitely clicking right all through the lineup. Uh, Hank Contreras look great. I'm excited about this team. It's gonna be a, I think it's gonna be a fun year. I sure you say. I mean, he just, he just was handed a check, in essence. For thirteen and a half million dollars, yeah, he's gonna say the right thing, and I'm with you on saying the right thing versus doing the right thing. I am, and I am not about to accept anything at face value. I'm going to continue pushing my own personal thing, where I believe that this franchise needs to have its payroll at $100 million next year. And now that these two extensions have put them over 60, and I do remember everyone saying it's going to be around 30 or whatever, and I kept telling them, no, it's going to end up up here, and it did. This, all of this, is nothing more than a start. The person that almost nobody, no, 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 not almost, nobody in Pittsburgh trusts is Bob Nutting. So what he says is one thing. What he does has to be the same thing. It just does. When Hayes gets done, when Reynolds gets, I mean, it's not done, but, you know, it's a pretty reasonable for both sides kind of a Band-Aid. And when he's saying stuff, not just to me the way he did in Bradenton, but now to everybody about planting a stake in the ground and about looking around the diamond and saying, who do we trust? Who do we value? Who do we want slash need to be here in Pittsburgh once the big prospect cavalry arrives? These are things that he's never said before, much less begun to take action on. Is he changed? Has he seen the light? I have no idea. As much as I talk to him, I'm not the guy's psychologist, but I do know that a lot of what's happened this week, as small and insignificant as the baseball component can be from the standpoint of being three and three in the standings, as if that matters, the rest of this, the overall put it all together into a ball kind of feeling is this is different this is different uh it's not different from anything that i've covered because i also was around when things started to develop oh you know 10 years ago a couple of years into clin hurdle's tenure when you started to see you know andrew mccutcheon blossoming into an mvp type when you started to see Neil Walker and Starling Marte, and then the outside reinforcements started coming in, A.J. Burnett and Russell Martin, and the whole scene and everything just kind of took off. And all of that was actually very fast once it did. This team isn't there. This roster isn't there. But to quote a new something that Ben Charrington must have mentioned a dozen times over the offseason, the Pirates internally feel that they're going to surprise some people. They feel that they have some answers for some players in terms of upgrading. They feel guys are ready to take another step in their maturity, whether that's what you've seen so far from Crow, what's expected out of Mitch Keller, and of course, the pending arrival of O'Neill Cruz on top of however this situation plays out with Contreras. Put those players and Diego Castillo and others who perform into the current mix and take out the Hoy Park, the Josh Van Meter, the Jose Quintana nonsense, and just play ball with the guys who have the talent. Yeah. This actually could be the start of something fun. It's okay to say it. It just 
is when we come back. Just one question. Welcome back. Time for J1Q. Today's comes from Dan. And he asks, hey, Dan, with this two-year Reynolds deal, should this be looked at as a starting point for a lengthy extension or just a means to an end? And Reynolds is going to go ahead and hit free agency in 2025. Dan, the answer to that is probably about as complicated as you'd imagine. But in the short term, all that happened here, and I'm going to start spilling all of this out now instead of giving it to you in little bits and pieces, which is what I've had to do because of the nature of the type of reporting that I was doing. And you can't say this and you can't say that. And that didn't come from me and whatever else here. Now that it's it's over and done with, somebody screwed up at 115 Federal. And the arbitration process, something that's always conducted on an island with all 30 teams, there's, there's a place in the building that's just arbitrations. And I, I've known this for years. That doesn't mean there shouldn't have been oversight. That doesn't mean people shouldn't have been aware. It doesn't mean that they're not ultimately responsible. But it happened. So the Pirates end up filing because of some $600,000 difference, which is a joke. And which, candidly here, the owner knew was a joke. And he called it much harsher words than that whenever we got together down in Bradenton. So there were two things that could happen from there. One was they could work toward the longer term type of deal, like what happened with Kibrian Hayes. And the other was that they could just try to patch up arbitration or part of the four years of arbitration that Reynolds still had at that point. The former, meaning the long term extension, was broached between the team and the agency. It never made it to the player. Hence, my reporting a couple of days ago that it hadn't made it to the player. A long-term, big-figure number had never made it to the player. I'm putting that in large, bold, underlined, italicized, shoot fireworks out of them letters, okay? So the focus became the two years. Now, I reported a couple of days ago, both in print and on this show, that a two-year arbitration-type deal, kind of a bridge, I guess you could call it, except that Neil Huntington's ruined that term here forever. And rather than just settling on this year, this part was Nutting's initiative, let's do it for a couple of years. And this way, any and all whatever bad feeling or whatever would get ideally smoothed over. And by that, I'm referring to, of course, between the team and the player and the player's management. So if Reynolds were to have some kind of, you know, terrible, unspeakable thing happened, he's not operating on a bottom dollar salary. Okay. He's, he's pretty comfortable in getting $13.5 million over the next two years, which, by the way, is markedly above arbitration norms. And in the meantime, and this part also was important to Nutting, they would keep the door open, both sides would, toward that long-term deal. Now, I also told you a couple of days ago that there's some trepidation about the long-term deal on the team's end, at least as it exists. They were meh about the overall dollars in the equation. Again, feel the need to repeat this, none of which made it to the player. All right. So that just tells you how preliminary that was. I have absolutely no idea what those numbers were, what the years were, or anything like that. I venture to share as much information as I can with you, but I'm also pretty open, I'd like to think, in telling you when I've got nothing. And I've got nothing as far as years and money goes. So that's how this came to pass. I was leaving the ballpark on Wednesday afternoon after the Pirates' victory over the Cubs. Bob Nutting was heading down to Derek Shelton's office, which I thought was really strange. 
Brian Reynolds from the other side was heading to Derek Shelton's office, which I also thought was rather strange, except that there had already been a couple of players poking their heads into Shelton's office to grab a couple of cold ones, so I thought maybe maybe Reynolds was doing the same thing. Why don't I report stuff like that? Well, I didn't think it was going to be significant. You see stuff like that all the time, but there, there it was. Other than the owner going into the manager's office, there it was. And it all got done, and now you know the full story, and the player is happy. Uh, Reynolds made that very clear yesterday. Yeah, it feels great. Um, you know, I'm really glad that you know, this is where we landed and now. Uh, move forward, and, you know, just, just go through the season and subscribe. And that right there, my friends, is all he wanted. He just wanted to put his focus back on baseball. This was starting to get to him, not necessarily in an acrimonious way. He was just more annoyed by it than anything else. Now he just gets to play ball. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates, uh, not just today, all week long. Let's do another one on Monday, at which point I'll be flying up to Milwaukee to cover that series against the Brewers. 